going to get ready to go right into this message of deliverance. I'm going to ask you guys just to bow your heads really quick and we are going to pray and then we are going to be on our way. Father God, we thank you Whew, for this day, God. Truly, you're great and greatly to be pleased, Father God. Lord, I ask you right now, I need you right now in the name of Jesus just to allow me to speak with diction and clarity, Father God. Allow me to decrease and allow your Holy Spirit to take over this vessel like never before, Father God, Lord, and just speak this word that you have been so anxiously wanting to get to your people. Hallelujah, God. Lord, sin, Father God, in our lives, forgive us for it, God. Wash us white as snow, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, God. We need to hear from you clearly, Father God. Open our eyes so that we can behold the wondrous things in your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Open our hearts so that the See the word that is sown that they finds good ground, hits fertile soil, develops strong, deep roots, mm -hmm. and bring about the appropriate harvest in due season for your glory, God. Hide me behind a cross, speak through lips of clay, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in the master's name of our Lord and Savior and friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So, Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 13th chapter. 1 Corinthians 13th chapter. While you get there, I'm just going to talk a little bit. Um, you know, there has been a... Um, principle that has been taught throughout the body of Christ and the principle works along the lines of seed time and harvest time mm -hmm. and um, the theme of this seed time harvest time teaching is that you plant a seed and in due season a crop shall emerge because you planted a seed. Mm -hmm. You sowed a seed, you put the seed in the ground, and eventually a crop will emerge. Seed time, harvest time. What has been lacking in this teaching, and I'm trying to pace myself because <laughs> I'm really excited about what God is doing in this ministry. And for yeah. anyone who catches this on social media and anyone who catches this on YouTube later on down the line, and if you're watching it on your screen, God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, this this message is going to give you the in-between. Mm -hmm. um, what's been lacking in the seed time, harvest time message is everything that needs to transpire in between sowing the seed and reaping the harvest. Have you been casting your seed all over the place mm. and wondering why you haven't received the harvest? Wow. Everybody's been saying, so, so, so. You got to get seed in the ground. You got to get seed in the ground. And everyone's sowing, 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 and they're right. throwing seed and they're planting and they're planting, but they're wondering, where is my harvest? So the objective of this teaching is to inform the hearer that prior to a seed producing a harvest, it must be watered, it must be nurtured, right. it must be pruned, it must be allowed to sprout leaves so that it can bask in the sun and go through a natural seed, goes through a process of photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is the process at which sunlight is transferred and changed into energy. And energy is another way to call power. Oh my goodness, I'm about to go there already. But the seed has to go through all of those things. It even has to create energy so that it can reproduce itself, so that it can grow, and then it can bud, and then it can blossom. And all of that has to happen prior to harvest and fruit being produced. And we've heard it for years now. So seed, seed time harvest, so, so, so. But what? Are you doing in the meantime to cultivate that seed to make sure that it produces a fruit? How are you nurturing that seed? How are you pruning that sprout? How are you watering that thing? The seed must be allowed to grow yes. before a harvest 
becomes mm. manifested. Right. And this message is to inform the believer that it's time to be cultivated and it's time to grow and that playtime is over. All right. First Corinthians 13 verse 11, 12 is a very familiar passage and I'm sure most of you have read it at least once by now and you said I don't understand how this comes together with seed time and harvest time but God be with us he's going to walk this thing out with us verse 11 reads and I'm reading from the living translation 1 Corinthians, First Corinthians 13 verse 11 and 12 when I was a child mm. I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away, I put childish things, I put childish ways behind me. Now, thus concludes the reading of the scripture for our purposes this morning. Now, I, I talked about seed time and harvest time, and, and I'm just going to do this really quick and dirty because I have a little ways to go. But, like, my sons are here today with us at House of Triumph, and to put it, you know, short and sweet, I, my sons are my seed. Right. <laughs> my sons are my seed and and I have uh, I have goals and I have visions that I see my sons as men but what I have to do for them is I have to make sure that I cultivate them that I right. put them in right. opportunities for them to succeed so that I water them I correct them when they do the wrong thing I admonish them when they need to be admonished I praise them and congratulate them and validate them that's how I cultivate and water my seed because I cannot expect them to be inventors I cannot expect them to be doctors I cannot expect them to be lawyers I cannot expect them to be worship leaders I cannot expect them to be mighty men of God if I don't pour some of the ingredients that cause mighty men of God to sprout bloom blossom and become if I don't take the opportunity now in their impressionable time so I understand I believe God for a harvest in their life of, of spirituality and holiness and sanctification but I got to cultivate mm -hmm. that thing Amen. when I was a child I spoke as a child I understood as a child mm -hmm. I thought as a child so what is a child mm. we're talking about seed here and it's time play time is over yeah. a child a old. child is a person between birth and full growth. Yeah. A, a person between birth and full growth. And if we look around the room and identify the adults and the children, we would probably all be in agreement as to who belongs in which group. Right. Right? Right. right. There would be factors and various variables that we would use to assess and determine who belonged in the child group and who belonged in the adult group. Some of those variables might be speech, mm -hmm. how that person talks. Do they, you know, have, can they talk at all? Are they still gaga goo goo? Or can they, you know, <laughs> articulate with a high level of vocabulary and an extensive vernacular? Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Yeah. We could also identify who was in which group, the child or the adult, by the possessions they had. Mm -hmm. Are they sitting in church with keys to a house or a car, or are they sitting in church with a teddy bear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Behavior would be another example. Do they know when to speak? Do they know when to be quiet? Do they know how to handle themselves in appropriate manner given the situation that they're placed in. Right. So we will, there are some things that we can identify naturally. You know this is how we do. Right. Naturally to determine a child versus an adult. Children also have limitations that adults do not have. Mm -hmm. In the United States, when you come become 18 years old, you get the right to do what? Don't say, don't say smoke. <laughs> You get the right to vote. <laughs> That's why I didn't go to 21, because y'all been like, oh, we're going to the club tonight. But no. <laughs> but 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 you you at, at, depending on what state you 
live in, when you reach a certain age, you can get a driver's license. Right. Children aren't allowed to drive, but when you reach a certain age, you get certain privileges. So children have limitations that adults do not have. Children are also under the authority of their guardian. I almost right. This is almost a separate message altogether. Children are under the stewardship of whoever has um, custody mm -hmm. of them. Right. So if that child gets into some type of trouble or that child finds themselves in harm's way or becomes sick, then it is the custodial parent's responsibility to deal with everything according to health or legally that pertains to that child. Mm, that's right. And it's going to become a difference because a lot of children don't understand that. They don't understand that they are under the authority mm -hmm. of their guardian. Start smelling itself. Start thinking themselves higher than they are. See, they are children. And because they are children, they still do childlike things. They are not at that point in their development. Why is this capable of putting childish things away? I want to get ahead of myself, but I want y'all to understand something. Because a lot of times children want the rights or the authorities or they want the limitations and restrictions removed but they're not able to put the childish things away yet. Y'all with me so far? Yeah. Children are not equipped for survival. Children are not equipped for survival. Pay attention. Child can't go out there, you put them on the street and survive on their own. Right. By their own ability, by their own wisdom, by their own experience. They're just that they're not strong enough body, even the immune system. Right. A child cannot survive in the elements by themselves. What happens to a baby cub if it's separated from mama bear? Mm -hmm. they start crying. Baby cub don't know how to hunt. Baby cub don't know how to get in the river and swat a fish. Mm -hmm. Baby cub don't know how to protect itself from right. hunters. That's mama bear job. Right. Baby not equipped for survival. Mm. Limitations of being a child. Mm. Like I said before, children these days they 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 grow up too fast and not they're not they're not prepared or equipped for the world that they recklessly rush into. Yeah, right. They recklessly rush into without the benefit of experience, without the benefit of knowledge, without the benefit of wisdom. Right. And they run out there thinking they know it all because they be, be, because they watched a couple of things on World Star and and, and, and and they have this convoluted version of what the world is because they live vicariously through empire and and through scandal and they think they understand what the real world entails and consists of but they could be no further from the truth than the East is from the West. I mean, you hear what I'm saying? They, uh, it, it's ridiculous, but they rush recklessly into the world they think they know it all and as a guardian or a parent or a steward over their life you may be telling them X but that's not what they saw on MTV Cribs so MTV Cribs is right and you're wrong wow hmm. watch this they rush they rub recklessly into the world yeah. there are some people who are seven times three mm -hmm. 21 mm -hmm. seven times three they're mm -hmm. legal adults right and they exhibit the same behavior. Mm -hmm. They rush recklessly. They rush recklessly into situations without giving account or consideration to all of the variables. Mm -hmm. The scripture that we opened up with does not identify age by a number. No. It doesn't say when you're eighteen. When you're 16, right. when you're 21, we understand that Joseph, before he was 20, was doing big things. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not a number that identifies your maturity. <laughs> it's your behavior. Right. The scripture said, when I was a child, I thought a certain way. I understood a way. I behaved a certain way. But when I became a man, I put those ways away. We have to be very careful about rushing into 
adulthood because the person who rushes recklessly into adulthood without being benefited from guidance, discipleship, experience, and wisdom, they enter into life without the tools required to build anything substantial. They walk into life empty-handed. They walk into the world without what's necessary. So, introspection time. Are you still a child? Mm. Yeah. Wow. Are you still a child? The scripture. Let's look at the scripture again. The scripture has the three identifiers that, that, that it points out. Your speech, your understanding, and your thinking. Are you still a child? What does your speech look like? What does your speech sound like? Right. When I talk about speech, I mean, what is the subject matter of your conversations? Yeah. What's the level of substance in your communication? If all you talk about... I, 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 this, is how, this is how isolated I am from the world. I have very few reference points at this time. At one point, I would have a lot of reference points, but I have very few reference points. But are the, are, are, are the subject, is the subject matter of all your conversations locked into what's a trending topic on social media? Is the subject matter strictly what's going to happen next on your favorite television show, be it Empire or Scandal or whatever the other happening? Is that or, or or do your conversations do do they enter into the political realm? Do they enter into the social injustice realm? Do you talk about your faith in God? Do you talk about building greatness? Do you talk about for where is your mind? Because your speech and your communication and your conversation is directly linked to your maturity. Are you talking about childish things? with little to no value or is your conversation of substance yeah, yeah. are you still a child then it says I understood as a child mm -hmm. to what degree do you comprehend the consequences or the results of your decisions or choices <laughs> do you understand what you're doing when you lie when you lie, you're breaking the wall of trust. Hmm. Where's your understanding at? It's just a little white lie. Nobody got hurt. Do you understand the consequences of a white lie. Uh -uh. your decisions or choices? When you decide to punch someone in their face, do you understand the consequences behind that choice? I shut him up. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Say that. Uh, but, but do you understand the consequences of that? That's not what you did. You put yourself in a position to be pursued for assault charges. Right, right. Do you understand the consequences? Where is your understanding? And I just got to give you a couple of, uh, uh, just, just wanted to give you a couple of, you know, examples. Because a lot of times we don't think like that. Here's, are you still a child? Has your understanding changed? I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. Is the perception that you have of yourself accurate or delusional? Mm. What do you think of yourself? As a man thinketh, so is he. he. Mm -hmm. So when you look in the mirror, are you honest? Wow. <laughs> with your strengths right. and your weaknesses? The things that you do good, do you do you magnify them and make yourself out to be better than you really are? Your weaknesses, do you just ignore them altogether? Or do you have an accurate perception of who you are? What do you think about yourself? This is, and, and, and you may not think too highly of yourself given your whole track record of what you've done in the past, and that's okay. That's okay, that's honest, that's reality. But what you also have to understand that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Right. So just because you have those Amen. negative things in your portfolio, it does not mean that God cannot strike them all from the record moving forward. Amen. 
How do you, what, but what do you think of yourself? Do you think now that you've walked into Christ, you're still not good enough because of the things you did in the past? Then you're thinking like a child. Mm. You haven't gained the right understanding Amen. that you need. And what we are trying to accomplish this year, while everyone else is on some other thing, for House of Triumph and for this ministry and everyone associated with this ministry, we're moving into maturity. Amen. In 2016, playtime is over. Done. We're not coming here just to have good church meeting. We're coming here to be built and become strong. Amen, amen. Strong pillars for the kingdom of God. When you think about yourself, and when I say strong pillars, there's a reason. Because when you think about yourself as a, a, a member of the body of Christ, do you see yourself as part of the collective or are you only concerned with yourself? You can't be a part of a body and only be concerned with yourself. That's right. You can't be a part of anything and only be concerned of with yourself because you're connected. If a person has cancer, mm -hmm. that cancer has to be dealt with. Right. If I have cancer in my baby toe, baby toe. <laughs> if I have cancer in my baby toe, that cancer has to be dealt with, right? Mm -hmm, right. If I don't deal with it, what'll happen? It'll spread. It'll spread. Come and on. eventually yeah. it'll be into the big toe and in the whole foot. It'll work its way up my Achilles and my calf and my leg and my knee and, and, and it'll take over the whole body. So in that instance, either I have to go through some radiology or some, some chemotherapy and they bombard it with all these things to kill the cancer or it may have to extract that portion to save the whole body. But what's the point? And I use a negative situation, but I wanted to show you something good, that the body is connected. And if I have chemo in my baby toe, my whole body deals with it. Right. right. My whole yeah. body deals with yeah. it. Yeah. 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 You can't isolate yourself if you are a member of the collective body of Christ, are you still a child? Because that's how a child thinks. The first development of a child's psyche is the id. When a, <laughs> is the id. When a child is born, they don't care about mama. They don't care about daddy. When that child is born, what the first thing that child do? Ah! I'm hungry. Wah! I'm wet. Wah! I got a fever. Wah! Pick me up. Wah! Put me down. And they don't even care about who do it. No. You ever, been, you, 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 you ever been in a room? Do, do, do the baby care? If mama bring the, the bottle, daddy bring the bottle, uncle bring the bottle. He just said, give me the bottle. It's about me. I don't care who changed this diaper. Somebody better get this thing off of me. I need to, somebody pick me up right now. Right. I'm going to keep crying by walking past the baby. My baby. Ain't, ain't nobody going to pick the baby up? I pick the baby up. <laughs> oh, the baby like you. No, the baby don't like me. The baby like being picked up. Right, right. <laughs> the baby is about the baby. Yeah, right, right. Are you still a child? Do you only care about you? Mm. Or are you able to put you aside for a second right. and consider the collective that you are a part of. I'm saving up my money to get a new pair of Jordans. You know, sister so-and-so ain't got no food in her house. Right. <sighs> well, well. Because your sneakers are that important. Are you still a child? Mm. Are you a child spiritually? Watch this. It's just a question. Like, and, and, I'm, and I'm doing this so that we can begin to place ourselves on the spiritual developmental scale so we understand that None of us has arrived. Right. And we all have work to do. Uh, when, I, 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 when I had my first child, I was 20 years old. That forced me to grow up very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't as mature as I am now at 41 years old, but I put away a lot of things that I was doing at 18 and 19 when I had a child because I understood that I needed to start to become a responsible citizen for my child. Right. We're, but that was a moment where I had to spirit, I had to evaluate where I was in terms of what my definition of a man was because I knew if I didn't do that, then I would never get to the end result. I had to say, man, I don't have my own place. 
I don't have my own car. I do have a job. Um, bank account looking kind of funny. Paycheck to paycheck. Um, need to stop drinking, need to stop smoking. Those are bad examples for the kid. Um, but it allowed me to evaluate where I was as an example, as a role model, as a father, as a man, mm -hmm. what one should be, mm -hmm. so that I could begin to progress. So when I say, are you a child, what I'm really trying to say is, we, we need to evaluate our maturity, right. because that's where we're going. We're going, and, and, and guess what, you never stop maturing. That's right. You become more mature and more seasoned throughout time. So it's not a knock to say you're immature. Well, I, I, I'm immature next to Bishop. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> you know, right. and, and Bishop's right. immature next to his Bishop, mm -hmm. you know, in certain areas. Mm -hmm. You can't just be mature at playing video games and popping bubble gum. You got to have some areas in your life that you mature that hold substance. If you were attacked spiritually, would you know it? Mm. Where's wow. your spiritual maturity at? Yeah. Would you would you be so mad yelling at Donna oh, from down yeah. the street or Sam from across town that you would completely ignore the fact that they distracted you from what you were doing for God? That they pulled you? Would you know that it was a spiritual attack yeah. and it wasn't just about a person? Are you a child spiritually? And then would you know how to respond to it? Right. Would you know how to respond to it if somebody came for you with a spiritual attack? Hmm. Would you cuss them out? Would you pray for them? Right. If someone offended you, would you let them slide? Or would you bring it to a head to, uh, to, in love right. to let them understand that, listen, I didn't appreciate that, but you know, to God be the glory. But I want you to understand that everyone hasn't been endowed with grace and the gift of mercy like I have. So what you receive from me, you may not be so lucky if you pull the same nonsense with someone else. Mm -hmm. You call someone else out their name, they might shoot you in the face. So just right. go right to the jugular. They may not just turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. Turn the other cheek is a principle for the believer. It is not a principle that the world exercises. Right, right. The world exercises eye for eye, tooth for tooth. You see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where are you at? With your spiritual development. If you are questioned about your faith or your doctrine, can you explain it in a way that it can be understood? Where you, do, you, do you know why you're saved? Do you know how, do you know the whole Jesus, you know, you know, redeemed us from the loss as sin into the world through one man and, and, and it had to be cleansed through one man born of a virgin and the redemptive power of blood and what blood symbolizes and how the first sacrifice when Adam and Eve um, transgressed, how God killed, you know, and, and the blood and all that, and how it all works together. Could you explain that? Do you understand your faith? Do you understand your doctrine so that if someone questions you about it, you can articulate it in a comprehensible manner? Yes. Or are you just like, I don't know, pastor just said, repeat after me, and I'm supposed to be saved. Huh. Where are you at? Do you even care to know? Mm, Do you even care to be able to explain what you believe? Or are you just alone for the ride? Yeah. yeah. Again, let me reiterate, everyone goes through a season where guidance and instruction is needed. We all need guidance and instruction. And you have to always be open to instruction that improves you in some way. The moment you think that you can't grow, the moment you think that you can't improve, you have begun to fall on your face. You have begun to stumble. Hello. <laughs> you have begun to stumble. And if you aren't careful and catch yourself, restabilize yourself and right, balance yourself, right. You will fall. And whoa, the fall of pride and vanity is tremendous. It is tremendous. Always be open to instruction. As long as you stay teachable, you stay reachable. You know, the interesting thing about plants and goldfish, um, a plant will only grow as big as the pot allows its roots to expand so after a while unless you repot the plant it won't grow anymore a goldfish will grow as big as the container that it's in so if you get a goldfish and you keep it in a little plastic bag mm -hmm. it won't ever grow very big right. if you put it in a bowl mm -hmm. it'll grow a little bigger but after a while it'll stop then if you put it in a tank it'll get even bigger you ever see any small goldfish in a koi pond same fish, 
just bigger body of water. Have you ever seen a goldfish that lives in the wild? They get huge. Yeah. They get really big, but it's because they have the opportunity mm -hmm. to expand right. and grow. A lot of us can't grow because we don't afford ourselves the opportunity, but I want you to know the day that maturity is calling us out. And maturity is calling us out by placing us in a higher place of responsibility. And maturity is calling us to a higher criteria of self-awareness and accountability. And maturity is calling us to a higher... Watch this. We, we, we put the cart before the horse. Yeah. We put the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. We put the cart... Be for the horse. Everyone wants a higher place of worship. And everyone wants a higher place of praise. And everyone wants a greater anointing. And everyone wants God to enlarge their territory. And everyone wants their storehouses overflowing. They want their sheaves full from the harvest. They want their cups running over. But... Who is willing to step into a higher place of maturity? Who is willing to step into a higher place of obedience? Who is willing to step into a higher place of discipline, of consistency, of temperance, love, long-suffering, patience, kindness, to accomplish the higher place of worship? You don't just get into a higher place of worship without discipline. You don't get into a higher place of praise with praise without consistency. You don't get into a greater anointing without some temperance, without some studying, without some supplication. You want all the harvest but you don't want to go through the watering. You don't want to go through the cultivating. You don't want to go through the pruning. Oh, God knows you don't want to be cut. God knows you don't want to be refined. God knows you don't want to have some things drop off of you. So, but, 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 but you want to sing like Tamil the Man. Huh? Hey, and, 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 and you want to deliver like, like Jake's, but you don't know the price of their oil. You don't know the price of their oil. <laughs> oh man. I left my teaching aid in my bag in the office. <sighs> oh, Jesus. You don't know the price that they paid to get there. You know, um, everyone went to school, at least a little bit. I hope and pray. <laughs> I don't think everybody dropped out in kindergarten. I hope we, <laughs> I hope we got a couple of years under our belt. And when you're in school, you do, um, you do different things. You um, social studies, music, science, math, and all those things are to teach you the the basic fundamentals. But um, I know, don't just bring the whole thing. Um, I know one of the things that, at least in grade school, one of the one of the times that we all look forward to was recess. Yeah. Everybody, everybody enjoyed recess. Amen. Amen. I know. Um, <laughs> I know. I, I lived for gym class. As a matter of fact, gym class. I can always depend on. I can always rely on. Um, at least one good grade on my report card. I could get D's and everything else, but I knew in gym class, I was going to get an A. Amen? Amen. Amen. But um, I think a lot of us, all we care about was recess. All we thought about was recess. Can you get to hang out with your friends? There was no, there was no restrictions, no real rules. You know, you could run around. Run different. You, you could choose what you want to do. I could play dodgeball. I could play hide and seek. I could get on the swings. I could just sit around and talk. I could sit in the corner by myself and, and just have a moment. I could do whatever. And so, so a lot of times we got there. But then at, when, when, when recess was over, something would happen. When recess was over, they would blow the whistle. Mm -hmm. And everyone knew that when the whistle was blown, recess had ended. Mm -hmm. It was time to get back on your grind. Mm -hmm. It was time to get back in the class and study. So today I had to come in here and blow the whistle. 
because playtime is over. Playtime is We've been over. in recess for far too long. We've been jumping around, having good old church. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that in the right application. You Ain't nothing wrong with that. But church is more than just recess. Right. Church is more than howdy, howdy, good time. Church is, church, because this, 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 this worship service, Ain't church. Church is the called out body of born again believers, and God called us to put in work. And we've been so busy just having service of sowing seed, waiting for a harvest, that we haven't been doing any cultivating. We haven't been doing any, any, any maturing. And we definitely, definitely, definitely have not been putting away childish things. God has called us to addition by subtraction. Right. He's called us to addition by subtraction. The text reads that childish things have to be put away. That means we must make a comfort, a conscious effort to put things away. When my son destroys the house with all of his toys, his toys don't just pick themselves up. Oh. We have to pick his mess up. We have to make an effort in order to put those things away. You have to make an effort to put away the childish things. You have to put away the childish way of thinking. You have to put away the childish way of behaving. You, you want to be a man? You want to be mature? You want that? That's what God is calling us to in this cultivation. Amen. He is saying, put the childish things away. Turning your Bibles to Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Because I'm going to show you. Exactly what God is telling us to put away. Good for you. I did not. Ephesians, <laughs> <laughs> no mercy. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. Oh, my goodness. Ah. Verse 22. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 this is good, it's a lot, you think, <laughs> y'all, 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 do y'all, do y'all, who wants the harvest? I do. Like, 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 no, 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 seriously, you better, you better be, you better be careful what you're saying now, who really wants this harvest? Huh. Who really wants the blessing of the Lord? Who, 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 who really wants this harvest? Because in order to get to the harvest, you got to put away childish things. Right. You have to put away childish things. And this is nothing, I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm not, I'm not saying this to discourage you. I'm telling you this as a reality. Now, here's, here's a point. Here's a point. A lot of stuff you picked up, you, you picked up by accident. Does anybody go out and pick up a virus on purpose? Do you go out there looking for the flu? <laughs> uh, but, 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 but so a lot of this stuff you picked up because it's in our nature. Mm -hmm. But once it's identified, you have to put it down. Ephesians 4, 22, and I'm going to read all the way into the fifth chapter because this is a long litany of things that we have to put off. Where am I? Well, verse 22. If you, you were taught with regard to your former way of life, right? Former way of life. You in Christ now, that's your old life. You, you, that, you, you don't have that anymore. To put off, uh-oh, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires mm -hmm. to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his labor. You better stop that lying. Right. For we are all members of one body. When you lie, you make the whole body look bad. Mm. Oh, how right. about that? In your anger, do not sin. I like that. I like that. Get, be angry. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be angry. Right. Understand where you are. Be able to process. I'm angry right now, but that doesn't give me a right to punch somebody in the face, bust the windows out their car, slash their tires. Right. Sin not. Do not let the sun go down why are you, while you are still angry. And do not get the devil a foothold. Mm -hmm. He who has been stealing, watch this, must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his hands that he may have something to share with those in need. Mm -hmm. You got to have a means to help someone else. Right. This is well, what did we just talk about. You can't be concerned about yourself. You have to be willing to put yourself in position to be prepared. So when you bump into somebody who has a need, that God can use you as the instrument right. to fulfill that need. Right. 
And you can't be so worried about your needs that you forget that God's going to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. And he, but what he needs is for you to trust him and have some faith. See, you can't do that when you're a child. Right. Because all you're worried about is what you're going to give me for Christmas. What you're going to give me for my birthday. birthday. What you're going to get me, me, me. You can't do that as a it's child. Not me. You have to step into maturity. God is calling us to put off some old behaviors yes. and put on some new behaviors. Verse 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for the building up of others to their needs. Right. That it may be, so. can't turn the page fast enough, that it may be benefit to those who listen. You can't stop stop talking negatively. Stop yes. breaking people down with your words. Yes. Stop speaking hurtfully to people. If it ain't going to build them up, if it isn't going to lead them to correction, then don't say it. You may have to say some things that hurt, but you don't have to say them in a hurtful way. Truth hurts. That's why you have to garnish your comments with love. Don't just blurt something out in the heat of the moment. Think, how would you want somebody to say this to you? Right. If you had a problem and you knew it needed to be fixed, how would you want someone to approach you about it? There's a way that you can say things and be effective and not be hurtful. Verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Stop playing with the Holy Ghost. Stop, play Stop playing with the Holy The Holy Ghost is not a toy. The Holy Ghost is not a game. The Holy Ghost is not a joke. We talked before, either be hot or cold. Don't be lukewarm. You ain't tricking the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something right now. And the last thing you want is the spirit of Ichabod over your life. Yes. The Ichabod... Ichabod says the spirit of God has left this place. The last thing you want is for the Holy Ghost to say, I've had it up to here oh, with you. Oh my oh. You want to play around? Oh. I got something for you. Mm -hmm. 31. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. You gotta get that hate out your heart. Right. You gotta get that hate out your heart. And it ain't easy. Because a lot of times the people that you hate keep giving you new lessons. <laughs> you trying to unhate and they trying to move. No, no, no. Hate me for this too. I'm gonna keep you gotta get it out your heart. Right. You gotta get it out your heart. The more they call on, the more you gotta love. The more you got to forget. It ain't, I, I, I asked you if you wanted the blessing of God. I told you this wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. I told you it wasn't easy. And it's a process. You may, you may have to you know, cut back. You may have to prune. You may have to go for a second touch. You may have to revisit some things. You may have to evaluate over and over again. It's a process. But you have to be determined that this is where you want to be. Right. You, can't, you, you can't quit. You have to drive forward. Verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Look at that. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Here's the hurt piece. Stop cutting people off. Come on. Stop cutting people off. Stop saying stuff like you dead to me. Right. Come on. Stop doing that. Be kind and compassionate. What if God said you're dead to me? Exactly. That's mm -hmm. there, there, there is a day where some man, and when I say man, I mean men, mankind, there is a day where some will be cut off, where God will say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I, I knew you. I never knew you. But that's not today. How would you feel if God just cut you off without giving you every opportunity to get it right. How many of us have benefited from multiple opportunities to get it right? Mm. Yes. yes. Me, I have benefited from uh, multiple true. opportunities. This mm. thing is so powerful. It keeps going into chapter five. Be imitators of God. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and forgave himself and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offer, offering and sacrifice to God. Mm. Verse 3, but among you there must but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any uh, or any or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Hmm. You know, that's that's the key right there. 
That's the key. These are improper for God's holy. These are improper for God's holy people. That's the key. You know, uh, whatever. We we keep debating with people about homosexuality mm -hmm. and gender role preferences. And guess what? They're not God's holy people. Right. So where the line in the sand must be drawn is our faith. Mm. It says it right there. These are improper for God's holy people. Right. You could go as far as to say, if you're not going to be holy, rock yourself out. But when it comes to <laughs> his people, uh -huh. this is what his expectation is. So when you step in the door with your homosexuality, oh my Jesus, mm. I'm going to walk in it. When you step in the door with your same-sex relationship, when you step into the door, man and man, woman and woman, mm -hmm. more power to you. But the moment you say, I'm accepting God as my personal savior, and I want to become, I want, I want God to save my soul, you are now saying that I have to put off this childish thing. Right. I have to put off this thing because that is improper for God's holy people. Mm -hmm. There's a, just about everything is proper for Satan's minions. Oh my goodness. She preaches this thing backwards. For Satan's minion, everything is it's no holes bar. Right. I, 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 know, I know Brother James like wrestling, so so there's no hole bar. You can bring the steel chair into the ring. You can have somebody jump in and elbow uh -huh. drop somebody while they're not looking. You can even slap the referee and knock him unconscious for a couple of minutes and just go as crazy as you want to. There's pretty much no everything is pretty much acceptable in the world. But when you decide to align yourself with the kingdom of God because you want everything that comes along with that, you got to put those childish things away. Playtime is over. Are you still carrying the childish things of the world into a kingdom lifestyle? You cannot do that. Right. You cannot do that. You cannot. Y'all can read the, the, the rest of it. Verse 5. Um, Verse 5 hmm. pretty much puts it in another. I'll read verse. I'll, I'll read it all. Impurity. Nor should there be any obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. You have got to put this foolish stuff away if you want the harvest. Because unless, if you keep carrying all of this foolish stuff that we listed, you have no part in the kingdom of God. What does that mean? You sowing your seed, you sowing your seed, but you're not cultivating yourself. And that's why your harvest has been held up. Yeah. Whoa. That's why your harvest has been held up. Luke 12 verse 48 puts it like this. You want so much, you want so much, you want so much. Luke 12 48 says, to whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You can want all you want, but God requires holiness. God requires discipline. God requires obedience. God requires faith. God requires love. God requires all of that stuff. And just be, and, and, and he's not going to circumvent his process just to make you happy. That's not the type of father. That's not the type of parent he is. Right. He's not going to just spoil you without any expectation. Church has been winking at sin. God hasn't changed at all. He's always disgusted with sin. It's time we put away the childish things, saints. It's time we put away the childish things. You can sow, so, so. You can give to your bank account when dry, but you're not going to get a godly harvest, a godly return of interest on what you're doing until you put away the childish things. Playtime is over. Playtime All is eyes over. closed, every head bowed. Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you for this mm -hmm. day. We thank you for this word, God. We thank you for, hallelujah, just desiring for us to grow and mature and be mm -hmm. adults in your kingdom, to be seasoned, God. You're calling us to a level of maturation, God. And in order for us to mature, we have to put away those childish things. God, help us to put away our childish speech. Help us to put away our childish thoughts. Help us to put away our childish understanding, Father God. Help us 
to get the mind of Christ. Help us to speak words that are edifying and empowering, Father God, and give us wisdom so that we can move beyond this limited way of thinking and get the mind of Christ that is infinite. Your ways are not the ways of the world. Your ways exceed the capacity for human mind to comprehend, Father God. Let us embrace that and let it be well with our soul that the foolishness of the world is, the foolishness of God is considered wisdom in the world. The wisest man is irrelevant in God's greatest grand scheme of thinking, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, because we understand, <coughs> hallelujah, that you cannot maximize us. You cannot maximize our efficiency until we move into maturity. Lord, we want you to use us, Lord. Mature us so that we can be the vessels that you created us to be. Lord, as we leave this place but not your presence, we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 amen.